Hello there, everybody. It's so Butter Knight Dragon and welcome back to Tokyo Babble. Now, the. Blech. I had a bit of a moment with Samael. That happened. Lilith oh, strode up to me and coiled her right arm around the back of my neck. Jesus Christ, what kind of noises are you making? Ignoring my confusion, she proceeded to wrap her arms around my back. Uh... She stuck her lips at him. <laughs> I pushed her forehead away, forcing her eyes open with emotion. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what the fuck? She seriously proceeded to wail right in front of me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and tears were still kind of running down her cheeks. You're just a roller coaster slash on a. You're a roller coaster on a hurricane of just moods and emotions. Releasing her hold, Lilith placed her hand on my head instead, and proceeded to pat it, and didn't seem to intend to stop anytime soon. I grew slightly embarrassed by the whole thing. Razio proceeded to pat the head of the slightly morose Surumi. Oh shit, that was easy. Stuff and everything, yeah. I seriously doubted that possibility was very high, personally. Okay, well, I guess that one could have been possible. Shinjuku Station was a magical dungeon that would change its shape each time you entered it. What? What is this, dead cells? It definitely would be pretty bad if that turned out to be our third stage. Oh my god, imagine if a Dark Souls game was like that. The layout changed every time he died. Fresh, breathable air finally descended on the Tsukiji fish market as all the rotten meat vanished with Samuel's demise. This was probably the last day that fish would ever grace this place. I thought that a little bit sad. A truly passionate reception waited for us as we returned to Pandora. Cameo clasped my hand and squeezed it with so much strength it started to hurt a little, or rather, quite severely by now, ow, 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 ow. Crap! I forgot. Or, rather, I didn't exactly have an opportunity in the midst of the fight. Belial made a devilish smile. No, please, no. Oi, Ichio 
そうそうだから俺も一教師として一生徒と酒を組み交わそうっていうのさあい、uh, I, I don't see how I'm just gonna shut up Camille made a thoughtful face and crossed his arms Camille made a daring smile to which Belial answered with one of his own. I could spot rivalry burning in the eyes of these two, but it had not a hint of malicious air or animosity about it. Yeah! I felt as if an ice cold hand suddenly pressed against my back. I had to put all into I have had to put my all into making sure my face appeared undisturbed as I turned around. Did I? Did I? Astroth offered a surprisingly friendly smile and patted me on the shoulder. Showing not a hint of animosity or malice, he turned his back to me. What was he scheming? What was he thinking? And for what purpose? This world had a secret, something that everyone had exposed their backs to. The sob Samuel left me with gave sprout to a new wish in my heart a wish to destroy that secret. It would mean a revolt against this world. It might mean a sad and cruel end for myself. Still, I decided to make it my goal. I think I just broke my neck doing that. As I found my way back to the night duty room, Raziel suddenly tugged on my sleeve. Okay. This ain't you trying to get me naked, are you? God damn it. Hmm. Well, I didn't really mind. Dude! Because they're both perverts. Oh god. I thought about taking a step back, but Razio promptly circled around me. It, it, fronte precipitium? A tergo lupi. A fronte pressa tipi pipi 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 uh, please tell me I can get the fuck out of here. Sorry, why aren't you helping? <laughs> Though she wore a puzzled expression, the strength she put into clutching my shoulders didn't weigh one bit. What the actual shit is? Uh, uh, no. Please, no. P dude, just get the fuck out of there. Sorry, meanwhile, pulled out a digital camera from somewhere. Sorry, me! What the fuck? This is very, this is very provocative. This is very, this is wrong. This is wrong. She busted out her chest proudly. I'd rather know more about the digital camera of hers and what she was planning to do with it. Uh, don't mind my ass. I wasn't blind. This is incredibly wrong. I don't want to get. I don't want to get. I do not want to get demonetized. I, I, I don't want to get flagged. I'm probably gonna get flagged. I reflexively turned in the direction her finger pointed. Oh my god! And the next moment, my shirt came undone. 
Jesus Christ, man! I really don't like this. I really don't. I really miss the actual horror element, and I do not like this. Well, traced her fingers along my chest, irritation transferring directly to my skin through, from her touch. Uh. It tickled, it tickled, it tickled, it tickled, it tickled, it tickled. I don't like this. I legitimately don't like this. Sorry! Sorry, look like a festive musician that couldn't help jumping right into a party that she spotted passing by. I do not like this. Of course you're up for a fanfic! Stormy's idea seemed to trigger something inside our resident bibliomaniac. I really do not like this. Things were getting out of hand. No fucking shit. Noting Lowe's face drawing closer, I could do nothing but slut my shoulders. Just... Fuck, man. Uh... 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 What is she doing? You should I, please, Cameo, Belial, please just come in here and stop this. Fucking get out of there, man. Raziel! Please stand. Uh. Thank you for ending that. I think what transpired later needed no explanation. But if I had to stress one thing, it was that my defeat wasn't total. I somehow managed to preserve my under. Oh my god. Wait, seriously? Was I actually, like, seriously in danger? Yeah, to be fair, that was a little... No, that was a lot. That was too much for my taste. I'm sorry. In every way! I guess a guy with standards or restraint, yeah. Of course you got excited! She wiped the sweat off her forehead with a handkerchief. There was something seriously wrong with her as an angel. God, if it gets me, if it gets me out of this situation, Jesus Christ, please. Hmm. I'll check my condition. The venom would probably disappear soon enough, so there was nothing to worry about on that front. As for my endurance, I guess I had enough to cover mingling with people. The issue, rather, was the state of my mind. At the same time, I felt like I both wanted to have some time alone to ponder, as well as share my experiences with others. What should I do? Oh, holy shit, we actually have an option here. Um... Okay... Hmm... I mean, I could participate in the party. Uh... Well, Belial did arrange the party specifically, so... Hmm... Uh, 
I guess logically it would be better to go ahead and, well, I mean, eh, damn it. It would be rude to, you know, not go to the party if Belial, they all like did it to commemorate this whole thing. Ugh. I mean, I hope there's no like dark plan behind it or something, but Ugh. anything to get away from just that that just happened. I really don't like stuff like that. Blind dates. I would feel probably sick to my stomach. Oh my god, Sorami! Oh shit! Stay away. <laughs> Sorry, made a sad face. Kind of? <laughs> and so after our amicable discourse came to an end, we decided to head to the gym where the party was apparently already underway. Watch it be a trap and I'm dead. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, I thought so too. The party apparently started early, while we were still busy inspecting my body for damage back in our room. Yeah, inspecting the body. Angels and demons, with glasses and jugs in their hands, were already going wild. Garkin! Uh, are we old enough? We both handed each of us a champagne glass. Uh, I don't drink, so I'm pretty sure I can't agree with that. If I recall correctly, she sweet talked people into making wine from grapes. <laughs> Yet you're about to drink. Lilf and Razio glared at each other. <laughs> I guess that was a cultural conflict. Or should I rather call it a racial conflict? <laughs> Plus, I've seen what happens when you get drunk, Raziel. Sorry? Mimicking her movements, we too raised our glasses up. And so we clanged our glasses, finally starting our own party a little bit after the others. Yet as Sormi took a sip from her glass... <laughs> Tears welling up in her eyes, Sormi proceeded to sip from her glass slowly and more carefully. The thing she was drinking didn't even contain any alcohol. Well, I suppose everyone had their own individual palate. Oh god, Raziel, no! 
Sormi's rebellious spirit lighting up, she proceeded to sip her own drink again. Incidentally, my body could completely decompose alcohol, so as long as I didn't wish for it, I could never get drunk. Alcohol was a little different from me from water. Oh god. And so we drank. And drank. And drank. Oh god damn it. Uh, I made a huge mistake. That champagne didn't contain alcohol, yet Sarumi was already talking weird. Was this perchance the calm before a storm kind of situation? Maybe they're just getting drunk on the atmosphere. In any case, I had a bad feeling about this. Oh god, she's drooling. Lilith had covered Raziel's eyes with her hands. I thought about pointing that out, but the whole situation was too sad, so I chose to stay out of it. Ow. ごめん、今のもそう。ミリスはいつでも7歳の女の子。え、そこまで年齢低くしないでいいから。小学校低学年はちょっときついものがある。贅沢。いや、贅沢とかそういうものじゃないと思うよ、私。うん。もう一杯
This is incredibly... This is very uncomfortable and I do not like this. Uh, made sense. If memory served, her refusal to submit to Adam ended up being the reason for their divorce. Uh, this wasn't good. Lil's eyes sparkled red. The alcohol seemed to actually make her serious about this. How could a demon that lived for thousands of years be this weak to drink? Was she crazy trying to do it in front of all these people? Oh. Oh. Jesus Christ, Raziel! Oh god, no. I was gonna cry. <laughs> uh, I almost forgot we were in the gym. Whoa, don't get sidetracked now. I could get a hold of her Achilles tendon, the same technique I used to neutralize Samael. Oh, fuck. Raziel's full weight fell on my back. Ugh, I couldn't move my arms like this! No! Turning me on my back, Lilith clasped my hands, wrapping her fingers around mine, and gave me a bow. No way. No! Sorry! Sorry, me appearing out of nowhere, shoved something round and brown into Lilith's open mouth. Drum cooking? I managed to escape my hold as Sormi distracted too. Get the fuck out, get the fuck out of there. I opened my mouth out of reflex and there was a meatball in there before I knew it. The next moment it seemed like a hand grenade had detonated inside me. Oh god, no. <laughs> Oh god, it's a repeat. You monster! The description alone turned my blood cold. No wonder it felt like a fire rage inside my stomach right now, and it was unlikely it'd yield anytime soon. Drink three gallons of milk. <laughs> Sermi sees another meatball with her chopsticks. As the three were busy enjoying themselves together, I silently snuck out of the room. Well, now, where should I go? Uh... Oh god, now they're getting drunk. That wasn't produced for consumption, was it? Cameo finally spotted me lingering about. Oh god. You're taking small sips and he's just taking gigantic chugs. He waved me over, so thinking it rude to feign ignorance at this point, I took a seat next to him. Someone had prepared cushions for everyone, probably because the gym floor was pretty cold. The men seemed to be enjoying their drinks and food to the fullest here right now. Hmm. That was a swift change of heart. I had mixed feelings about Camiel drinking booze with such a grin on his face. Probably because I didn't like the idea of Samuel's death being celebrated. 
I drained my glass of champagne in silence, forcefully slowing my alcohol decomposition machines a little. This should make me at least a bit drunk. Uh, oh. I suddenly felt as if the world around me started to float slightly. That was probably what it meant to be drunk. Still, it seemed to retain to all of my faculties. This level of drunkenness shouldn't pose much of a problem to my bearing. I took the cup from his hands and downed it in a single gulp. Maybe I went a little bit too fast on this. But it isn't as assaulted me with thrice the strength of before. Sakewa clasped his hands together and proceeded to pray. After about two seconds, he was drinking again. He tore the cup out of my hands before I had the chance to answer. He then proceeded to insert his finger into the liquid, which promptly seemed to grow hot, vapor now trying to escape the cup. How could I drink something he bathed his finger in? I gave him a vague answer. Uh, Belial, you okay there, buddy? Belial, who had been drinking in silence up till now, suddenly entered our conversation. Belial cleared the amber liquid from the bottom of his mug in a single gulp, and without changing the target of his gaze, continued. Sorry. He thumped me on the head. It kind of hurt. Sumanaka. Beale handed me a glass. He meant me to drink it, probably. I answered him with a question to buy some time to come up with a better reply. Cameo and Beale both peered deep into my eyes. サマエルは誰かに弾劾されることもなく自分から罪を告白したんだったな。ああ、東京バベルの巡礼が確立してすぐの頃だ。彼女は第一次宣言隊を壊滅させ、ただ一人の生き残りに叫んだ。Hark, the pilgrims of Tokyo Babel, my name is Samael, your one true foe. It was me who has led you to all this state of constant peril, surprised? Yes, look at my face and feel your hearts burn in hate, if you think you have it in you use the dead bodies of the masters that torment you as a ladder to reach up and drag me down from supremacy. 
Hark, angels, demons, and humans. You can come and behead me, split my body in two, or skewer my heart. I'll be waiting. And so Samuel officially became a rebel among the divine beings. サバイルが自白した点だ。震災が起きた際、サバイルがどこで何をしていたかはわからないが、何も自分から罪を告白する必要はないだろう。あの女特有のパフォーマンスという説もあるぞ。確かに。その可能性もないではない。だけど、そう
か細い理由だではどうやって僕は命を懸けた彼女もまたそれに応じて命を懸けたただそれだけのことだ I proceeded to take a shot of whiskey my mind grew hazy I felt I might blurt out something I shouldn't and so I decided to stand up instead I staggered away from the two. So, Kinyamoko de Marimai. Tendo Sesanama, Machiga in a Kenny Dedosa Kirakuda. Omaya, I to no Sizio Stirnoka. Camille gave Billy a nod and took a sip from his glass. Alcohol had a magical property to loosen one's tongue, and it worked as well on demons as it did on humans. Well, technically, he is the false god, Yao the Boeth. Belial made a smile, to which Camille narrowed his eyes in response. Belial nodded. Camille agreed. If someone asked Tendao Setsuna whether he wanted to live or die, he would likely answer, to live. But it wasn't like he wanted to live because he didn't want to die. He wanted to survive because he had a mission to fulfill, and he needed to be alive to do that. That was what subtly separated him from other humans. Most didn't want to die because they had dreams, or because they were afraid of pain, or were attached to their family. People would lament death for a plethora of reasons. But if you had to unify them, you could say they didn't want to die simply because they wanted to live. If you died, you would return to nothingness. If you died, you would disappear. That was what terrified them, made them pray for survival, beg for forgiveness. But Tendao Setsuno was different. He wasn't afraid of death. He wasn't preoccupied with the idea of his own survival. あいつはあれだ。機械、いや、違うな。どちらかというとプログラムに近いか。そうだな。プログラムが一旦実行されてしまえば、ただ止まらず突っ走るだけ。そしてプログラムが終われば、ただ閉じるだけか。They couldn't exactly declare such a way of life in human. In essence, many people did indeed follow such a routine. Discovering a dream and rushing towards it for the entirety of their lives, unimpeded by the notion that, they on that only death and emptiness waited beyond it. But that was also what made humans rise above the beasts. If there was one thing that separated them from Tendao Setsuna, it was that the boy didn't mind for his objective. Dream, to be handed to him by someone else. There were indeed enough cases among regular men where a father would entrust his dream to his son, or a mother to her daughter. Still, nonetheless, there was one thing that Tendao Setsuna this, that set Tendao Setsuna apart from them all. A boy who might soon bring a paradigm shift to their world. They saw him off with a toast of both a prayer and a curse. And ended up drinking until they both collapsed that day. Searching for a place to cool off, I eventually found myself on the roof. Above me, countless stars illuminated the sky with their brilliant luster. I knew they were fake, but I could not deny their beauty. They looked the same, regardless if they were right here in arm's reach or somewhere far beyond in the cosmos. It didn't change the fact that both of them sparkled in the light, and so both of them were equally worth of admiring. <laughs> A girl's face peeked up from the roof's fence. It seemed she had been outside.
そうねせっかくだから少しロマンティックさもサンマリマシにしてみますか Considering what you just did a couple times already, I do not feel comfortable with that. Oh shit. She snapped her fingers and clouds covered the sky. The light of the stars seeded the scene to the white of the falling snow. Holy shit. I mean, I guess. I gazed up into the sky. Its deep canopy was now filled with countless snowflakes, descending down to the ground. Once here, they'd vanish and reappear anew in the sky with no end in sight. The enchanting sight made my thoughts freeze for a moment. Lilith gave me a snicker and a gust of chilly wind hit, my, hit me head on, waking me up from my momentary slumber. She listened to my honest feelings with a smile on her face. As ordered, I exhaled a breath of carbon dioxide to the outside air, likely due to the cold air turning to a white, va a white vapor and ascended up into the sky. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. はあ誰だどうです。ついで言うと、12月25日でもない。ほら、このトーキョバベルに日付が存在すると思って。ほら、ファックスローレンス。確かにそうだ。だから、今日は12月25日と合ってるね。クリスマスよ、クリスマス。
本体さえ無事ならリリスはいくらでも呼び出せるからねむろんデメリットはあるけど例えば私はとんでもなく弱かったりするし She stopped suddenly. I waited, but it didn't seem like she was planning to continue. I felt an odd, anxious sensation take hold of my heart, so I couldn't help but prompt her to continue. Sure. Lilith's fingers rose, and lightly touching her lips, traversed the air towards mine. I nodded, and she, narr and she narrowing her eyes, whispered to my ear. So, a hologram like herself was both an illusion and a shadow. Without the original there blotting out the sun, she could not carve her own existence upon reality with her own strength alone. God made men in his image. Then could it be that we too were mere imitations of the Lord? The words weren't a mistake. I chose them deliberately. There was no way she could be someone else's shadow. I repeated myself twice. She read the expression on my face. I wasn't angry, not one bit. Well, took a step towards me and let her head rest against my shoulder. I couldn't feel her warmth at all throughout through winter cold. Still, nonetheless, my heart seemed to grow a little bit warmer inside. It was all a matter of perspective. My mind processed her as a real thing. Others could say whatever they wanted. She would always be the one and only true Lilith for me. I reached out to the sky and grasped the empty air. I cocked my head at her words. I was already more, fam more than familiar with her race on there. Truth is the daughter of time. Deception is the daughter of darkness. Her own existence was directly connected to that concept. ものになろうとしている私はそうじゃない。ああ、分かった。君が本物であると願った時点で、君自身の生きる意味を探さなければいけないのか。ピンポーン。そう。私は私であるために探さなければいけない。仲間だな。仲間。いや。ウィルフ
いや親睦そうに同意しないでよね否定しようがないそれもそうか Let's let out a laugh. 次は第三階層ねまサマエルを倒したあなたなら何を恐れる必要もないわ生きる意味を見出してくれれば最高頑張りなさいよ説明当然努力するつもりではあるが君も頑張れ自分の生きる意味をつかみ取れいっそ競争しようか勝った方が負けた方に好き放題するのっ好き放題か成人指定がかからないものであれば<笑>あんた私のこと何だと思ってるの言うと成人指定になりそうだから言うかえ<笑>言わなくていい成人派の自分としては泣いてしまいそうな気がするそれで賭けに乗る Seems like a fair bet. 構わないよじゃあこっちを見て Oh We faced each other そりゃ約束の誓いをするの Well Yeah. The pinky promise? I was about to raise my hand, but it'll stop me. Oh! Oh, okay. My face must have taken on a very grim countenance at that moment. なんかこう、誓いが貧弱なものになってしまいそうな気がするからよ。But like, a pinky promise is the ultimate promise. A selfish notion. A selfish but very understandable wish. わかった。手を当てるぞ。おうおう、どんと来いよ。Lilith pressed her shaking hand against my chest. I responded by doing the same in return. And then both of us closed our eyes. I could hear a faint sound in my vicinity. A simple but trusty rhythm. The beating of our heart felt oddly soothing, slumber inducing. Of her heart, sorry. I didn't lie. I didn't need the threat of swallowing nails or needles, to be honest with her. We retracted our hands. I grieved more for the loss of the soothing sound than the fading of her warmth. Lil gave me the same smile as always, one of sheer cheer. Still a strange pose, honestly. Lil snapped her fingers and the snow ceased falling. Some snow had piled up on the roof during our parlay, but I, I imagined it would soon melt if we left it alone. Yeah. Nah, she's probably gonna keep it. The next moment, an unnerving hyena like smile appeared on her face. Maybe I should have gotten it back by force. You just lost your jacket. But before I could grasp her shoulder, she darted back inside the building. I suppose I had no choice but to give up on the jacket for the time being. I sighed with a smile on my face. Hmm. Astroth pondered. He had to maintain, protect, and rule the last creation of his best friend. Tokyo Battle. He had to put the full extent of his efforts into this task alone and nothing else. He knew full well that his path would lead him to only ruin, but he clung to it nonetheless. Eve pondered. What she desired was utter and complete ruin. Death of God, annihilation of angels, extermination of demons, absolute destruction of everything that drew breath. With a weapon like Adam at her command, she had nothing to worry about anymore. Well, she supposed she couldn't be sure if he had enough power to slay God. Still, his chances were far from slim. The only real problem that remained was Astaroth. She knew it was about time for her and the Demon Lord to split paths. Eve continued her thoughts with a nice cold mind. 
She knew herself. She herself lacked the strength to pick a fight against anyone. Still, she had words at her disposal. She had a mouth to form them, and the malice she had built up over the long years. She might not have had the power to resist the flow of the river, but she could at least divert it a little, towards a direction it would have never found on its own. The possibility of her success was at best slim. If anything, it was much more likely she'd be found out before the right time drew near and punished henceforth. But so what? All she had to lose was her life, and that by itself was already of little significance. She made peace with her fate long ago, however there was still one little thing that gnawed upon her heart. Upon Once her conspiracy came to light, how would the young man sleeping next to her at present react? The idea didn't bother her much before. He could have chosen to despise her. He could have chosen to despair. As long as she had absolute control over him, he was but a weapon to do her bidding. And that was how it was supposed to be, yet... Eve cut the silly thoughts short. Ridiculous ponderings that served no purpose for her dream were a waste of time. It was all nonsense. It was all an ancient dream long lost to the passage of time. The dream soiled, engulfed in her boundless malice. Hmm. What? I was getting ready to end it. What? Metatron was drawing his last breath. What? Confusion, bewilderment, mystery. Questions filled his head rather than pain. With an absolute authority, he was on the verge of striking down God himself. He had brandished a weapon that absorbed Uriel's power that was potent enough to obliterate the Lord, the Harbinger of Ash. Metatron was supposed to override the old decrepit heaven with his own, but that of his own. Yet he failed. His wish had been refused to him, just like that. Messenger? Sum up. She cradled a lightning rod in her hand, adorned with the crimson of the angel's blood, yet at the same time not a single red spot tainted her snow-white kimono. The woman that used to be called Messenger regarded Metatron with a cold smile. An attack from behind, oozing malice. Still in normal circumstances, the lesser god Metatron would have dodged it, and promptly banished the insolent angel from this realm. <laughs> Oh god, the actual Lilith. That has to be the actual Lilith. Master? Master? You don't have to tell me. You don't have to freaking put question marks. I know that's the actual Lilith. Also, why is she naked? After a small bow, messenger promptly vanished. The two left behind were the dying Metatron and. Called it. Oh, holy shit. A girl with silver hair and apparently no clothes. Lilith. Please put on some clothes. She let an affectionate laugh. Observing her disposition, Metatron couldn't help but cock his head to the side. Lilith leaned into the immobile Metatron with a chuckle and began her story. Even though death had been knocking at his doors, Metatron never lost his composure. He wasn't scared. He was prepared for the end, from vanishing, for vanishing from this world. Oh, 
神という素晴らしいシステムを作り上げてしまっただからこそだからこそだあんな生物ですらないものに任せるべきではない<笑>パソコン捨てて手計算で仕事しましょうだってその方が真心こもってるからみたいなノリよねそれって<笑>神はどこまで行っても神に過ぎないたとえ時間差をしようともただの神に過ぎないのメタトロン wanted to protest, but realizing that his end was nigh, chose to keep his mouth shut instead. Lilith <laughs> cleaved Metatron's head out of reflex. The body of the Grand Angel promptly fell to dust and vanished. Jesus! She scratched her head. The only article that stood testament to the Grand Angel's presence in this dark abode was the double bladed sword he had crafted from his own blood, now lying lonely on the floor. Thinking little of it, Lilith grasped the handle of the Harbinger of Ash. A lack of care, or maybe it was haughtiness. The moment she touched the divine weapon, it turned to ash like its previous owner. She didn't pay much thought. If it disappeared by itself, all the less trouble for her. She disappeared with a song on her lips. Not a thing remained in this lonely space. No, something still did. Failing to become the true god, Metatron left this world, but his fervor remained in the form of his weapon. Crafted in the far future, it was the mightiest weapon known to man, a tool of divine destruction, the Harbinger of Ash. Looking for a new master, it triggered its autopilot. The blade of black and white cut through space, spilling flames like gasoline in its fiery race. Its destination, the world that had not been properly defined yet, it only rushed towards its new master. Uh, fucking excuse me. Okay, I can't seem to end find an end place at all. I felt as if my soul had left my body. What the actual shit just happened? I touched her cold cheek with a shaking hand. No, I only tried to touch, but I was shaking too hard. My vision hazy, I felt vomit rising up in my throat. I couldn't think of anything anymore. Sormi, her expression vacant, fell to her knees. Nothing felt real about this. Even Sormi looked kind of translucent, like a ghost. But thanks to that, I could easily see what was going on around us. Raziel embraced Sormi's shoulders. Her own expression was also a mask of anguish, but she seemed to retain enough of her faculties to still be wary of that angel. I turned around. Adam and Eve stood there. Both of them regard the situation with calm eyes. Under normal circumstances, I would have lashed out in anger, but at the moment, I could not force myself to feel a thing. I stood up. Oh, go fuck yourself. I took a deep breath. I distanced myself from my memories and sorrow and tried to calmly take in the situation. I had no choice but to acknowledge reality. Lilith died. Some sort of needle thing that appeared out of nowhere abruptly pierced her chest and that was it. There was nothing I could do for her anymore. I stood up and readied the Bacati sword. The woman before me narrowed her eyes. No, I want to kill you! She covered her mouth with her sleeve and let out a chuckle. At that moment, I thanked the gods that all my emotions, including anger, had the good sense to leave me for the time being. Calm mind, cold heart, and swift hands were all that I needed to cleave her head off, my one and only objective.
Ignoring my obvious intent to kill her, she suddenly turned to purple lightning and zapped away out of our sight in the blink of an eye. I thought about flying into the sky to follow her, but I had no choice but to admit that I couldn't catch up to her. I might have managed to stand against her in battle, but there was no hope for me to win a race against lightning. I called out her name, but I knew I would no longer ever hear her cheerful voice again. I knew it full well. Still, it all happened so suddenly. I imagined that in a situation like this, she would have at least had time to struggle or fight back. Oh well. Wish I could have had more time to party. And only once it all proved truly futile, she'd give up with a smile, maybe even adding a one-liner or two to her farewell speech. She didn't answer. She was obviously dead. Sorme looked pale as a ghost. I imagine Lilith's death shocked her just as, as it did me. <sighs> her voice shook. I could tell she was on the verge of tears. Unable to find the right words to answer, I nodded. Raziel embraced Sormi's shoulders again. Sormi raised her uncertain face. There were still tears in her eyes, but puzzlement seemed to win out against sorrow in her mind for now. That wasn't right. You're wrong, Raziel. It wasn't like the Lilith we knew would resurrect. A new, different one would arrive to take her place instead. Sormi let out a sigh of relief. I didn't say anything. I didn't want to ruin their dream. The new Lilith might well be able to fill the emptiness in their hearts. Eve regarded me with stern silence. <sighs> to her, it seemed like I was in sorrow. The fucking sudden as hell! Her suspicion seemed to wane. I did not lie. I only chose to not reveal part of the truth. I picked her body up and was suddenly assaulted by a peculiar sensation. Unable to speak, I took the lead ahead of the other so no one could see my face. If someone hurried in front of me and turned around to see my countenance, they might have been in for quite a befuddling sight. Unnatural like that of someone who accidentally buttoned his shirt wrong or failed to tie his shoelaces. I wore a face that did not fit this situation in the slightest. Is this really Lilith? I couldn't help but ponder whether the body in my arms was that of my dear friend. What on earth was Lilith doing back then? As we reached the area around Koishikawa, Korokan Garden, she began acting very strange. <laughs> For those that easy to catch in this day and age. Hmm. Well, I wasn't going to pry any further if she didn't want me to. I felt someone tug on my sleeve and turned around. Sarmi glared at me with suspicion. Nothing. Uh, oh, the night that I and Lilith exchanged our little promise. Raziel peered deeply into my eyes from below. It wasn't like nothing happened exactly, so I couldn't quite deny their suspicion with ease. Well, Lilith is good with illusions, so... Sormi considered me with a somewhat dirty look. I didn't do anything salacious, though. Maybe a little. 
I gazed up at the sky to escape their eyes. There was no master in the third stratum. We could tell that much from the peaceful scenery. So we let our guard down. I didn't know if it was Adam or me that spotted the aberration first. A peculiar sound reaches from behind, like a thud of someone tripping. A shudder ran down my back. I rushed towards the direction of the sound, and saw it. Lilith lying in a pool of her own blood, a rod piercing her heart, and Messenger looking down on her in perfect composure. It looked, so, it looked surreal, like a skit from a bad comedy routine. Unfortunately, it was all too real. The weight of her body in my arms was more than enough to wake me up to reality. Still, what was that peculiar sensation I felt once I picked her up? That was all I could think about looking at her lifeless face. Cold, no breath, no pulse, not a hint she was once alive. Yet still I couldn't imagine her being dead. No, she's probably not. We buried Lilith the very next day. Camiel, Belial, and Astaroth. No one showed up particularly strong. No one showed particularly strong emotions, and why would they? A new hologram of Lilith would be here shortly to take her place. Seventeenth. I tried to gloss over it. Indeed, Stormy too shut herself in the night duty room for the whole day after we came back. Indeed. Angels, demons, and humans were equal in death at this place. All would turn to dust once killed as their souls had vanished to the nether. He gave me a light jab on the forehead. Mm, so they had a hard time understanding death, huh? <sighs> I'm gonna end it here, mostly because that was... Beyond. Freaking beyond sudden. Not to mention, they just got their- it's got me thinking that freaking Lilith ain't really dead. I mean, that particular Lilith. But that's just me, so that's where I'm gonna end it, so... I'm not entirely sure what else to say about this other- I mean... Other than just saying that was abrupt. So, if, thank, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode, because that was just so freaking abrupt. <laughs>